This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com Baruch HaMabam <clears throat> Welcome everyone to this special edition of the Wednesday Night Shear. L'Kavad Chanukah tonight's Shear is sponsored anonymously. We appreciate the sponsorship. And the Yibam Shem Shem Mavarech, them, Besimcha Uvenachas, Bracha V'Hatzlacha V'chol Tov Tamed. Uh, thank you everyone for joining. The elements are quite rough outside, and I'm very appreciative uh, to those who are listening to the share tonight on uh, Zoom or on live stream. And we even have, whoa, they're coming in by the droves. We even have a few people who brave the elements and are here live. Shkayach to Rabari, Rabbi Huda, Rabbi Ira, and Rabbi Shlemi. And um, to, to all those listening on the various venues, Baruch <clears throat> I want to remind everyone that uh, the Shurim are available on TorneyTime.com, on podcast, on Shas Illuminated, and, uh, and also on um, Kol HaLashon. Okay, so we're going to begin with a very interesting question. This is a question that we've raised in years past, and we're going to explore it from a new vantage point. This is a question that is raised by none other than Rabbi Hanan Vasserman, Hashem Yimkoim Damai. And Rabbi Hanan says, we have a principle in Yiddishkeit, in Judaism. It says in Shir Hashirim, Im If you don't know, most beautiful of women, meaning it's talking to Klal Yisrael. Klal Yisrael is considered the most yafa of all the Umay Yisraelam. If we don't know what to do, whenever we have a dilemma of what to do in life, so Shlomo Melch says, Go in the path of the sheep. That means follow your predecessors, follow the Avais HaKadoshim, and in the path that they took, you should follow suit. So, we want to know, when Klai Yisrael is faced with annihilation, and the Gezerois, and decrees, what is the proper reaction? Should we fight a war? And should we attack back? Or should we do tshuva? So Rabbi Hanan says, we have two holidays, we have two Yom Toivim in the calendar, and these two Yom Toivim are commemorate very different responses. In the times of Hanukkah, we fought a war. Mestama, they also did tshuva, but we don't find this major tshuva movement, they, they fought a war. In the times of Purim, they did, in the times of Purim, they did tshuva. Esther said, so here we have very, two different very, uh, responses. Now it's interesting, Hanukkah and Purim are celebrated very differently. Hanukkah is celebrated spiritually. Purim is celebrated physically. And we know the famous Lavush, because Hanukkah, they tried to take away the religion. They tried to abolish Shabbos, Mila, and Chodesh. So when they try to take away the religion, and God gives us the religion, we celebrate by observing the Halacha, by, by, we celebrate spiritually. In the times of Purim, they tried to annihilate us physically. So we celebrate physically. We drink wine, we eat meat. But the question is, the response of the Jewish people which seems to be somewhat counterintuitive. Why is it that in the times of Hanukkah, when they tried to take away the religion, the reaction of the Jewish people was that we, uh, we went to war? It's interesting. When, we, uh, when they try to take away the religion, we don't do tshuva, we go to war. And in the times of Purim, when they try to kill us, we don't fight back, we do tshuva. It's almost counterintuitive. This is the question of Rabbi Hanan. And we've answered this question in the past. <clears throat> in fact, we once cited the Bach to answer this question. And there's a very nice book called The Light and the Splendor that addresses this question at length based on the Bach and Rabbi Rucham Olshin. But today, today we're not here to uh, review old. Wednesday night we try to always uh, have something new. And I would like to expand the question of Rabbi Hanan in a historical observation, and that is, we, we Jewish people traversed four Golosim, four exiles, Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome. We never fight. We're always doing tshuva. 
You know, oh, the Gedolim said, let's have a kinos tshuva. Let's gather together and pray. You know, I, so in all my years in yeshiva, I never heard the Mayetzas Gedolim had Torah say, let's gather together and arm ourselves. You know, we, as far as I know, that has not been done and for a very long time. That was not done, done in Babylon. We didn't attack the Babylonians. They came into Eretz Yisrael. They exiled us to Babel. We didn't fight against them. Why didn't we go to, why didn't we fight? No, we're always busy doing tshuva. And in Persia, they want to annihilate us. Why don't we have Mordechai get up, JDL, or, uh, you know, um, Karava Maga, whatever they want to call, whatever it's called, Jewish Karate, Jewish Mafia, uh, you know, no, we're none of that. Uh, we're always doing tshuva. In, in Rome, Golos Bavel, Golos Roimi, Golos Edom, we're always doing tshuva. Only in Golos Yavan, all of a sudden, now all we're big, the Jews were big fighters, you know. Now all of a sudden we have to call the Jewish Mafia, the Chashmanam, a small family, they get together and they attack the Yavanim. All of a sudden, like the, all of history changes. The, the regular policy of Okay, everyone gather together and say Parak Kuf Chaf Alev, Kuf, kuf Lamed, and Kuf Mem Beis. And if you want to add uh, Parak Yutes, you could do that. You could say Ayin Gimel if you want. No, none of that. None of uh, Yom Kippur Katan. Forget the Yom Kippur Katan business. Forget fasting till Chatzos. We're fighting war. We're getting... Uh, what's going on over here? Usually Jewish policy is, in all the Golosim, we do Tshuva. And Yavan is the one exception to the rule. We're fighting. That's... I guess we'll call it my expanded question based on Rabbi Hanan. Now, there is a principle in Machshava. And that is, if you want to know the root of something, you have to look at the first time it's mentioned in the Torah. The first time something's mentioned in the Torah is the source of its power. This is something Rabbi Tzadik HaKoyin writes in Machshava Yisharutz, number two. And he says, I think this is my tradition, and uh, even if it's not my tradition, uh, it makes a lot of sense. You want to know the root of something? Go to the first time it's mentioned in the Torah. A good analogy of this is that which it says in Baba Kama. In Baba Kama it says on Daf Nun Hay, that if you have a dream, anybody, maybe I'll take a poll now of the uh, Zoom. Anybody here ever dream I don't know, I'm, I feel like asking Mr. A A A A A A A A A A A But, um, did you ever dream of the letter Tess? Did you ever dream of a Tess? If you dream of a Tess, it's a good sign. By the way, if you want to get uh, attention in the share, you should pick a very good uh, Zoom name. That usually, that usually helps. But, <laughs> just joking, I don't play favorites. Even my regular friends, even if they don't have any creative names, I still... We're still friends. But um, if, you want, if you have a test in a dream, the Gemara says that the best, uh, it's a good omen. If you see the letter test in a dream, it's a good omen. So the Gemara says, why? If it's because the letter test stands for toiv, there's a Pasuk in Navi. God says, I'm going to sashmeter you. I'm going to destroy you. So the Gemara says, no, that, that Pasuk has two tests. But if you see one test, it means... Good things are going to happen. Sigmar says, why? The Pasuk says, Tomasa Bishuleha. It's talking about the, the letter test represents Tuma. Sigmar says, no, if you see a test and a bees, that means good things are going to happen to you. Sigmar says, what do you mean? What about the Pasuk? Tavu Baret Shareha. The, the Shir is, it has good mazel. We already got in Megillus Esther, Trap, Echa, and Shir Hashim. It's Gavaldek. So the Gemara basically says, no. If you see a test in a dream, you know why it's good? Because the first time the letter test appears in the Torah is the word taif. So that means the definition, the essence of a test is good, is, is taif. Yeah? So from here we see the first time something appears in the Torah, that is the essence of the matter. That is the root of the matter. Now, What's very interesting is, since Hanukkah was a time where the Jewish people, for a rare, unique situation in history, went to war, let's try to study what is the first war mentioned in the Torah. And of course we know the first war mentioned in the Torah is the war of Avraham Avinu, 
where he went to attack the four kings. The four kings and the five kings, and uh, even though the five kings outnumbered the four kings, the four kings were much more powerful, and Avram Avinu went to rescue his um, nephew, Lloyd, from the four kings. That is the first war mentioned in the Torah. Now, if you look at the lineup of these four kings, batting first of the four kings, Vayehi bimei Amraphel melech Shinar, and it was in the days of Amraphel, that's Nimrod, king of Shinar. Aryoich melech el asar, kedar la'oimer melech elam, v'sidom melech goyim. So bad, lead off batter is Nimrod. Batting two, Aryoich melech el asar. In the three hole is kedar la'oimer melech elam, and the cleanup batter is Sidol melech goyim. Yeah? Who are these people? We have no idea. The one thing we know is all of a sudden, in the middle of the story, Instead of Amraphel leading off, they switched the batting order. Usually, you know, the, well, the manager has to report with the batting order a few hours before, and they can't change it. No, here the batting order changes. And instead of Kedar Loimer, lead, uh, instead of Amraphel leading off, Shitaim as Reishana, Avdu as Kedar Loimer, Slosha, Reishana Maradu. All of a sudden, all we talk about is Kedar Loimer, Kedar Loimer. The three guy, he's number one, he's number one. And in fact, so you say, I don't know, maybe he's the most prominent. A few psukim later, it says, Eiz kedar lo oimer melech elam, v'sedom melech goyim v'yam rafel melech shenar. Why does the Torah change the order? Amrafel uh, was leading off, and all of a sudden we forget about everyone except for kedar lo oimer, and then kedar lo oimer is leading off. And what's most interesting is that when Avram Avinu goes to war, he's predominantly then attacking a man by the name of Kedar la'aymer. Kedar la'aymer. I got Rebbe, that's a good one. Kedar la'aymer. Yeah? So, who is this Kedar la'aymer guy? What is this all about? Rashi says, well, the five kings served Kedar la'aymer, and then they rebelled, so he took it personally, and he's the Balamaisa, and that's why he's mentioned first. And if we're able to identify these four kings, it might be a, a great opening and a great Pesach of understanding when you go to war, who you should fight against, and what is our source and shoyresh of being a precedent of how to fight a war. Because if you look in Bereshus Rabbah, Parsha Membez, Ois Dalid, says the Holy Medrash, Am Rafael Melech Shinar, we're Shinar, Rashi says in Bereshus, all the Mesei Mabel shook down to Bavel. Shinar is Babylon. Amraphel is the king of Babylon. That's the first exile. I'm going to tell you a little fact. That whenever you see four things in Bereshus, it will always symbolize the Dalet Malchios. In both the Sefer on, on um, Purim and Pesach, in the footnotes, we bring many, 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 many Midrashim on Bereshus that almost everything in Bereshus that is counted in numbers of four represents the Dal and Malchus. For instance, That's Ershtens, Svetens, the four rivers that come out of Gan Eden, then the Brisbane Habasarim, all the fours in Bereshus represent the Dal and Malchus. And the four kings are no different. They too represent the Dalet Machios. Meaning, Amraphel is Bavel. Aryoich, says the Bereshus Rabbah, is Antioichas. Kedar Oimer is Melech Elam. After all, Elam was a city in Madai. Sidol is the king of Goyim. Edom is Goyim because Edom is a big um, melting pot of various Goyim. In fact, the Medrash concludes... When you see nations of the world fighting one against the other, then you know Mashiach is uh, coming soon. Because as soon as the four kings went to war against the five kings, all of a sudden, Avram Avinu is redeemed. Now, plugging the Bereshus Rabbah into the war of the four kings, who is Kedar La'aymer? He's the king of Paras. Who would that be? Achashverosh. Who is Avram Avinu then fighting? Persia. And that does absolutely nothing for us for tonight's shir. Because we're not here tonight to talk about Achashverosh as much as I love to talk about Purim. 
This is Hanukkah. Tonight is Hanukkah. What is absolutely astounding is the Ramban has a different gersa in this medrash, and Rav Chaim David Shavel feels that the Ramban's gersa in the medrash is much more accurate. The Ramban says that Avram Avinu's war against the four kings teaches us that ultimately in Jewish history, four kings will stand up against the Jewish people and they will all fall into our hands as the four kings fell into the hands of Abraham. Says the Ramban, the first one is Melech Bavel, Nimrod, as Daniel saw in his vision, a head of gold. Number two, el And not like the Medrash Rabbah that identifies el as Antiochus, says the Ramban, el was a city in Madai or Paras. And Elim, which was a Persian city, refers to Yavan. Because that's where Yavan galvanized his sovereignty. He appointed a king. That's where the first king of Greece sat in, in Elam. And from there, the Malchus of Yavan spread to the whole world. And then the Ramban quotes the Medrash Rabbah that confirms his pshat that Amraphel is the king of Babylon. And Aryoch is the king of Madai and Paras, and Kedar Oimer is the king of Yavan. And according to this, this has now just opened up the episode of the four kings and the story of Hanukkah in a new light that we never recognized. Because that means Avraham Avinu in his war against the four kings, he's not fighting Bavel. You don't fight against Bavel. He's not fighting Nimrod. And he's not fighting Arya, king of Persia. You don't fight the Persians. You should know by now. And you don't fight the Romans either. He's not fighting Sido Melech Goim. He's fighting Kedar Laimer Melech Elam. He's fighting Yavan. You want to know, Rabbi Hanan's Kasha, why is it that of all the Golosim, we only fight against Yavan? Rabbi Hanan, so to speak, Niva v'layada maniva. He said, when you don't know what to do, you need to look at what the Avais did. So when Avram Avinu fought the Dalin Malchios, who did Avram fight? He didn't fight Bavel. He didn't fight Persia. He didn't fight Rome. He fought Yavan. He fought Kedar Loimer. That's why even though Kedar Loimer is listed third, but in the war, it's Abraham versus Greece. Yavan. Because that is the precedent. When we're in any other Golos, we don't fight the Romans. It doesn't end well. When the Romans surrounded Yushalayim, the Gemara Gittin says the rabbis did not want to fight. They wanted to make peace. Why didn't they want to fight? Because they knew Masei Avay Simon Labanim. Avram Avinu didn't fight Sidon Melech Goyim. He fought, he fought Kedar Laimer Melech Yavan. And therefore, Rabbi Sai, in the Sefer Chikre Lev of Rabbi Lev Haiman, and I want to thank my dear friend Rabbi Gedalia Schwartz who secured this sefer for me in good time before the shir. I was searching for Chilek Dalid of the Chikrei Lev. And a few of these points I was uh, um, alerted to in a new book called Capturing the Light by Rabbi Emanuel Bernstein. And it's based on a mimer of the Chikrei Lev, Rav Haiman. And B'Siyat HaDashmaya, we're going to add a few nuggets and that is the war of Avraham Avinu against the four kings was the Masi Avay Simulabanim to the Machama of the Chashmanoim in the times of Hanukkah. So let us analyze for a moment because we say in the Al Anisim, Rabim biad ma'atim, Giboyrim biad chaloshim, Timeim biad tahirim, Rishon biad sadikim, Fezeidim biad oiske sarasacha. And all of these five contrasts are clearly seen in Avraham's war against Kedar Laimer and the four kings. First of all, let's talk about Giboyrim Biyad Chalashim. We know that Rashi says the four kings, says Rashi, the four kings, even though they were less than the five kings, Rashi says they were Giboyrim, and they, even so Avraham Avinu ran after them. So the first example of Giboyrim Biyad Chalashim is Abraham running after the four kings. Who calls the four kings Giboyrim? Rashi. Rashi HaKadosh. What about Rabin Biyad Ma'atim? Well, the matter says, do you know how many soldiers were in the army of the four kings? Barashas Rabba Yedalad Yedalad. Alofim Rabin, many thousands. And how many did Abraham with him have with him? 
At the most, the Pasuk says 318, but Chazal say he only had one, Eliezer. So it's Abraham, Eliezer, versus a few thousand. What do you call that? Rabbin Biyad Ma'atim. What about Tamei and Biyad Tahirim? We know the Chashmonah wanted to light only with Shem and Tahar. Avraham Avinu was the first person who was? Oichel Chulin Bitahara. And the Yaakov Shmani says he circumcised his Avadim for Tahara. Furthermore, what does the Pasuk say in Eoiv? Miyitain Tahar mi Tamei. Avraham is the Tahar who came from Terach, who's the Tamei. Rishoim biyad Sadikim. Interestingly, in Tehillim Parak Lamed Zayim, it says, Cherev Paschu Rishoim Nimroid is called a Rasha. Against Avraham, who's called a Tzaddik. Nimroid, Rashi says, when anybody rebels against God, Bikavana, knowing God, and he rebels with brazenness, we call him, he's like Nimroid. And you can be sure if Nimroid is the quintessential Rasha, then his cohorts, the other three kings, were likewise. And of course, Zaydin biyad oiske sarasech Amravinu, Chazal say was Zakein v'yoshev b'yeshiva. Amravinu's Masech da'avay de Zara had 400 prakim. Avramavinu utilized Gezeira Shavas and other of the Yudge Momidais. So right now I know you're thinking, sounds okay, sounds pretty good. Avram Avinu is attacking the four kings, but primarily Kedar La'oimer, who according to the Ramban's version of the Medrash, Kedar La'oimer is Yavon. And this is the precedent that even though in general we don't fight wars against the oppressor, against Yavon we fight. But now I'm going to share with you a few clues, and you're going to say, I can't believe I never realized that. These clues are so compelling. This is not Begeda Remez. It's like black and white, the war of Hanukkah and Parshas Lech Lecha. What kind of people did Avraham take with him? Vayarek es chanichav. He took his chanichav. What in the world does the word chanichav mean? In Parshas Lechacha and the rest of the parsha, the people in Avraham's house, they're called Yelidei Beisai, Anshei Beis Avraham, chanichav, his trained ones. Says Rashi, Eliezer, that he trained in mitzvahs. Anytime you initiate someone in a job, in a responsibility, in a, a prestige, it's called chanichav, like chanoi chlanar, or chanukas hamizbeach, or mizmar shir chanukas habayis ladavid. Friends, how many times in Tanakh are people called chanichav? This is the only time in the whole Torah that people are called Hanukkah people. What's going on over here? Avraham is fighting Greece, and we have no better name. I mean, it's like we picked out of a hat. What are we calling his soldiers? Hanukkah people. Chanichav. Coincidence or compelling? Obviously, that's quite compelling that it's the only time in the whole Chumash the word Chanichav is referenced referring to people. Now, what does Avraham Avinu do to them? The Pasuk says, Vayarek. Where else do we find that word? In the Chumash. Uh, nowhere. What does Vayarek mean? Says Targum. Vizares. Amravinu energized them. Who is always called Zrizim in Shas? Kaihanim Zrizim Haim. So there's an adjective over here which is unique to Kahuna. Why? Because this is not an ordinary war. This is the war of Hanukkah. This is the predecessor of Hanukkah. This is the Masih of similar banam of Hanukkah. So you'll say, well, wait a second. Greece twice in Chumash is given a very specific name. In the beginning of Bereshus it says uh, there are four words describing the emptiness and the darkness of the beginning of creation. Vahar says, Sayu, Vavoyu, V'choyshech, Apnei Sahim. Sayu, the matter says in number... 19 is Bavel. So like the Pasuk says about Babylon, Ra'isi Asa'aretz v'hinei sayu. Vayhu is Madai. Vayav hilul haviyas haman. Choshech is Yavan. Why? Because they darkened our eyes with their decrees. Where else is Yavan called Choshech? By the Brisbane Abbasarim. Avram Avinu saw Ema 
That's Bavel. Gedoyla, Madai. Chashecha is Yavan. Yavan is always called darkness, night. Question. Abraham's war against the four kings. When did it happen? Day? No. Says the Pasuk, look at number 18. Vayechal leik alehem la'ilahu. They divided in the night. Why in the night? Well, they fight a war only in the night time? Because this is the war against Yavan. Yavan is chashecha. Yavan is darkness. So if, if Abram Avinu is the Masei Yavai, similar banim to the war against Yavan, of course it's going to happen. Balayla. That's the only time. It's only, um, it's only appropriate. Now, let's think for a moment. If Avraham Avinu is fighting Yavan, and Yavan is darkness, then Avraham Avinu represents the miracle of Hanukkah and the nearest of Hanukkah. So Avraham Avinu would then have to be called the Or. La Yeuman ki super, it's mamish amazing. The Medrash Darshins after Soyu Vavoyu. The Choyshech Apnei Sahayim. The Medrash says in number 22, Vayoyme Elikim Yehiyar. The Yibar Shalom says, Enough Afela, enough darkness. Vayoyme Elikim Yehiyar. Ze Avraham. Avraham is the R. <laughs> so it's amazing. The Choyshech is Yavon. The Medrash says explicitly, Avraham is the R. Why is Avraham the R? Avraham's war is what brought the light of Hanukkah. You see, the world view, the culture, the hashkafa of the Yavanim was one of darkness, one believing in the forces of nature, believing in the beauty of the, phys- of the physical characteristics of, of a human being. That's pure darkness. Amravinu was mi heir mi mizrach tzedek. Amravinu is the light from the east. He brings the light of true Amun and Hashem. Says Rav Hyman. Rav Gedalia, this is the best one. Says Rav Hyman, Mamish, I don't know, this is like Nevuah. So Avinu, he wants to attack Kedar La'omer. And he drives them back to Weir. All of a sudden, Abraham's driving them back to Damascus. What's he doing in Damascus? The Greeks. Were they just Greeks? Were the Yvanim just Greeks? What do we call them? Syrian Greeks. <laughs> So Avram says, I'm going to drive you back to your source, to your Shoresh. You Kedar La'imer people, you Greeks, I'm driving you back to Damascus. I'm driving you back to Syria. That's where you come from and that's where you're going back to. So this is also another clear remez that this is the war of Hanukkah in the embodiment of the war of the four kings. Now, we mentioned that the first time something appears in the Torah is the root of it all. The root of everything is the first time it appears in the Torah. Marv Rabbi the miracle of Hanukkah took place through who? The Kohanim. Where's the first time the word Kohen appears in the Torah? Wow, what a, what a coincidence that the first time Kohen appears is in Avraham's war against the four kings. Of course it's not a coincidence. The war of the four kings is the Muhammad of Hanukkah. The Muhammad of Hanukkah came about through the Kohanim. And therefore the first time Kohen appears is in the narrative of Avraham Avinu's war against um, the Kedar La'aymar, against Yavan. Now another amazing thing. In this parsha of Avraham's war against the four kings, we find a very unusual expression for God. Not only that, we, we find Hashem's name mentioned again and again and again, I believe four times. God is called Kel El Yain. Now all of a sudden everyone's getting tired because they think it's like Friday night in Magen Avais or something. No, it comes from Parshas Lech Lecha. Kel Again, Hashem is called Kel El Yon. 
And Rav Hyman says four times in the parasha, Rebbe Hashem is called Kel Elyon. Why does Hashem's name appear again and again and again and again and again? Very Pasha, the Gemara says in Rosh Hashanah, that one of the decrees of the, Chasha, of the Yavanim is that we cannot mention the name of God. The Gemara says in Rosh Hashanah, Yud Chesam Beis, number 27, Moisiv Ravacha Barhuna, the Gozra Malchus Yavan Gezeira Shaloi Lahazker Shem Shemayim Al Piyam. When you talk, you can't mention God's name. Uchshen Gavra Malchus Chashmonoi, when the Chashmon prevailed, Hiskinu, they made a Takana that you could mention Hashem's name in a star. And from now on, you know what they wrote in a star? This is this and this year of Yochanan Kayin Gadol, Lekel El Yain. In every star written after the Hanukkah story, they said this, it's the 10th year of Yochanan Kayin Gadol, of who serves the Kel El Yain. All of a sudden, we're calling Yochanan Kayin Gadol, associating him with Kel El Yain. Why not? He's the Kayin Gadol of Shakai, Tzavakos, Elohim, Ekia. No! How long? What? How long? How long did this last for? Yeah. So it's interesting because Gemara says they abolished it because uh, they, uh, they were afraid. Good question, Avi. They were afraid that, that uh, they, they would write on a star God's name and then would get thrown in the trash. So they eventually abolished it. I don't know after how long, but it was a, it was a takana of the Chashmanam always to utilize Hashem's name and specifically the name Kel Elyon. Why the specifically the name Kel Because the whole story of Hanukkah was the fulfillment of the pre-enactment of Avram Avinu's war against the four kings where, they, where Avram Avinu established uh, the name Kel Elyon. And that war was the war of the Kohanim. And that's why the first time Kohen appears in the Torah is in the war of the four kings. Now I'm going to share with you a, a remez oyem v'noira. The Ben Ishchai, in Parshas Kisava, and actually we have a chapter on this in the book, but now we could put two and two together. It's a matonim and ashamayim. The Ben Ishchai writes in Parshas Kisava that the word elyoin is a compound word. Elyoin could be read al yavan, over yavan. So it comes out unbelievable, it comes out incredible. Because after Avinu emerges victorious mm-hmm. over Kedar Lo'aymer, what does the Pasuk say? Is, the Pasuk says, Ah, oh, Umal Kitzedek, Melech Sholem, Oizem Ebu Koyen, Lekeel Elyon. He's the Koyen of who? The God, who is Al Yavan, who helped us defeat Yavan. And he blessed him, he says, Blesses Avram to the God, Elyon, Al Yavan, who helped us beat Yavan. And blessed is Kael Elyon, the God who helped us beat Yavan. Why all of a sudden is Elyon, Elyon, Elyon? He had three Pesukim in a row. And the answer is because Aram Avinu's war taught us that of all the nationalities, we don't necessarily fight, but against Yavan, Kedar Oimer, Laila, the Chashecha of Yavan, Bekoyen, that he chases them back, Adam Masek. Avraham is Vayahi Ar. Listen to this. Is Avraham, the 25th word in the Chumash is Ayer, is Avraham. Why? Because Avraham gave us Hanukkah. Avraham Avinu is the Vayhi Ar who brought us the light in the darkness of the Chashmanayim. Now, watch this. This is Mamish Ayam Benayra. So you'll ask, wait a second. First of all, Koyen is not exact over here because. The Chashmonoim were the Koyhanim. <coughs> that means the victors were the Koyhanim. And moreover, they weren't just Koyhanim, they were Koyhanim Gedoylem. And right before the shear, after the sheets already were printed, I added two Mar Mekoymois. On my sheet, I don't think uh, it's out yet. Uh, tomorrow, everyone bother Aaron Subar for the updated version, number 35 and number 36. On the sheet, the Yalkut Shemayni, I just came across. You know, when Hashem came to Avram, He said, Yalkut Shemayni says, Hashem was telling Avram, I'm going to make you a Koyen Gadol. So the Yalkut Avram Avinu had a din of a Koyen Gadol. By the way, I believe the Chida says, How could Avraham bring Yitzchak on the Akedah? The moment he shechs Yitzchak, Avram Avinu is an Oynein. 
An oinin can't be makar of a carbon. So uh, the the akedah is a catch twenty two. The moment he shechs him, he's an avel an oinin. Now he can't bring the carbon. The answer the chidah says is Avram Avinu wasn't a kain. He's a kain gadol. Kain gadol serves ba'aninas. The beracious rabba Rabbi Yishmael Oimer Avraham kain gadol haya. Now where did he get kahuna gadolah from? He got it in this battle. Because the Gemara says he lost it to shame. Why did he lose it to shame? Because shame blessed Abraham before he blessed God. Look at back in the Psukim. Gemara tells us in, I believe in Adarim, that because on Daflam and Vezom and Vez, because Malki Tzedek praised Abraham before he praised God. He lost. Avram Avinu became a Kayin Gadol through Hanukkah. Through the war of Hanukkah against Yivon, Avram Avinu became a Kayin Gadol. Maybe that's a remez to the Pach Shemen that was signed with the signet of the Kayin Gadol. Okay, now watch this. There's one more thing perhaps that you could say is not alluded to here, but even that is alluded to. You know, if you read the story, there is a major tangent which seems to be not an accurate way to portray the story. So Aravina runs after the four kings. He defeats the four kings. And the Melech Sedoim, who was one of the five kings who originally lost to the four kings, comes to Avraham and he's about to talk to Avraham. And then it says, oh, wait a second, time out. 30 second time out. And it interrupts by saying, Oh, Malki Tzedek, Me'alech Shalem Hoytzi Lechem, V'yoyim V'hu Kayen L'Kel O'yoyim. All of a sudden, Malki Tzedek comes out, and he brings wine to Avraham. Like in the middle of the story, the Melch Sedoim is about to go over to Avraham and say, Hey, Avraham, uh, wait a second, Avraham. Uh, Ten liya nefesh, v'haruchush kachloch. You know what the Melch Sedoim says to Avraham. V'ayoyim V'ach Sedoim Avraham, Ten liya nefesh, v'haruchush kachloch. So Avram says, Avram says, I'm not taking anything. But as, as Melech Sedoim was about to speak to Avram, all of a sudden we push away Melech Sedoim. Oh, umalki tzedek melech sholem hoitzi lechem v'yoyen. Like, what was it got to do with the price of tea in China? All of a sudden, shame wants to drink alcohol and uh, eat bread with Avraham. Well, let's get the story over first. Avraham beat the four kings. Avraham ha- captured all the spoils. And the king of Sodom wants all the spoils back. So let him ask Avraham for all the spoils. And then let Avraham party with Malki Tzedek and let, they can have all the bread and wine they want. No. Melch Sodom is standing here, but we have to know, oh, Malki Tzedek came. Okay, all life has to stop. Because Malki Tzedek is bringing Lechem V'yoyen. I mean, big... Why do we have to interject the Malki Tzedek, you know, bar and, uh, and sandwich with, uh, with, with the Melech Sedaim? And for that, says Rav Hyman, something incredible. The Gemara Nadarim says that Malki Tzedek, because he praised Avraham before he praised God, he lost something. He lost the kahuna. What was Malki Tzedek before this whole episode? U Malki Tzedek Melech Shalem. Hoi Tzedek Mehu Koyen. He was a Koyen. But he had Malchus also? Could a Koyen be a Melech? Sometimes when a Koyen is a Melech, <laughs> the Koyen loses the Malchus. When in history did the Koyanim take the Malchus and they lost the Malchus? That's exactly what happened to the Chashmonaim. Says Rav Hyman, that's why the Torah interjects the little episode of shame, Malki Tzedek, in the middle of this war against the Yavanim, so to speak, because there is a crucial thing that's happening to shame that's a fundamental aspect of the Hanukkah story, and that is he's a Melech, he's a Koyen, but he's not able to hang on to both of them, because these two institutions, they don't go, go together. There's Kahuna, and there's Lo Yas, Lo yas or Shevet, Mi Yehuda. And at this fateful moment, Perhaps, uh, says Rav Hyman, the fact that Malkit loses the kahuna is uh, 
is a pre-enactment of the fact that even though, as the Ramban says, the Chashmonoim were chasidei elyoin, but because they violated the ethical will of Yaakov Avinu, of, of Layasar Sheva Yehuda, and they lost, so to speak, they were wiped out, they were not able to hold on to both Gune Malchus, this was uh, represented by Malki Tzedek, who was a Melech, but he ultimately lost the Kuhuna. So Marv Raboisai, Coming back to Rabbi Hanan's kasha, Rabbi Hanan wanted to know, why is it only in the time of Hanukkah we went to war, and not in the time of Purim? Is it possible that we could suggest, as Rabbi Hanan himself teaches us, that whenever we don't know what to do, we always have to look at what our ancestors did. And in Avram Avinu's war against the four kings, we find that he was primarily fighting Eiz Kedar Imer, it was a war against Yavan. And it was Vayicholek Alehem Laila, it was in the night, it was referring to Yava, and that's why it was Balayla. And Avram Avinu chases them until Damesek. This is the first war in the Torah. This is the, the source of war in the Torah. And the source of war in the Torah is Avraham, who is not only a Kayin, he's a Kayin Gadol. The Kayin Gadol is fighting the Yavanim. And Malki Tzedek loses the Kahuna because he's already the Melech. And this is. Kael Elyon, they were masaking from now on to say the Shema Hashem, as was done in the times of Hanukkah, and it was specifically Elyon, Al Yavon, Al Yavon, Al Yavon. And uh, this is just a small Pesach and a, a vista that really opens wide where the Shoresh of Yavon is in the Torah. But one last thing that I saw in the uh, book, Capturing the Light. The Shiltis brings that you put the menorah on the right side, on the left side, and the mezuzah on the right side. And the Shiltus writes, the balabayas should be in the middle wearing tzitzis. Which is uh, very problematic, because you light the menorah at night, and the midst of tzitzis is not at night. Well, why is he busy uh, focusing on the fact that the balabayas is wearing tzitzis? You don't have to wear tzitzis at night. Night is not the zman of tzitzis. Certainly, even according to the Rishonim that say, a beged yoim belayla, you have to wear tzitzis, but still, what's the focus on the tzitzis? What's amazing is, we have two encounters of Yavan in the, in the Chumash. One, of course, is Shem sees his father, Arum, and so does Yefes, who is the father of Yavan. The difference between Shem and Yefes is Shem runs. He's a Zoriz, like he's a Kayin. Yefes is a little bit more sluggish. Shame in the merit that shame covered his father, and he, over, he so to speak, triumphed over Yefes, the Yavanim. He was Zoycha, that his children have the mitzvah of tzitzis. But the mitzvah of tzitzis is not finished yet. Because when Avram Avinu comes back from war, and the king of Sodom says, give me the spoils, and Avram Avinu says, I'm not even going to take a string, that's what acquired the mitzvah of tzitzis for Klal Yisrael. Again, in our victory over Yavan. Two encounters Klai Yisrael has with Yavan. One, shame over Yefes, we're zoicha to Talis. The other one, Avram Avinu tells um, Melch Sadoim after his victory over Kedar Oimer, you can, I'm not taking a string. In the merit of these two occasions where the Jewish people showed their superiority over Yavan, we were zoicha to Tzitzis. Tzitzis then represents the triumph and the advantage of the Jewish people specifically over the Yavanim. It is no wonder, uh, suggests uh, Rabbi Bernstein, that the mitzvah of tzitzis is connected to the umtif of Hanukkah. But I think it's uh, quite compelling that this war is specifically against Kedar Oimer, and we have this reference, reference Elyoin, 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 which according to Ben Eshchai refers to Al Yavan, Al Yavan, Al Yavan. Hibon Sham should be mayor, Einenu Besairasai, we should be Zoicha. To the Pasuk, Gal Inai, the Abita, Neflois, Mitar Secha, Afrelch and Hanukkah, Shkaich Rabbi. Rabbi. Yes. Ben Ishchai says You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.